Hi, this is Gary Fong, and I'm going to do a really cool architectural photo of uh, this beautiful house here. And we have around sunset. This is actually my Canon 14 millimeter rectilinear 2.8 L lens, and it's extremely wide angle, but it also uh, fixes the barrel correction. You see right back here, I have a Sony. This is the A7R. Now, how did I get a Canon L lens onto the Sony? This is the Metabones adapter. That fits the E-mounts and preserves the autofocus and the aperture control and everything like that. Now, this flash right here is not transmitting. What I've done is I've turned this into wireless mode as a transmitter. I've got a lot of videos on how to do that. But I basically don't want this to figure into the flash calculation. I want to have the control in my hand of a diffuse flash source. So this was the only one that triggered during those exposures. As long as I, you see the little red guy blinking? As long as I point the two red guys together, don't need a radio slave or anything like that, this one will send off a light, but it won't calculate an exposure, but it'll tell this guy to fire. This guy has a light sphere on it, which gives the room an entire fill, but also sends light up to the ceiling. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn this flash off, and I'm going to put the camera on, as you can see here, manual mode. So it's 1 25th of a second at f4.5 ISO 200. You can see that dramatic sunset in the background, right? And so if I speed up the shutter speed, I won't see that much of the background. So right here, you can see that it's pretty much completely dark. But that's what we want. We want to have the flash be the one responsible for lighting up. So it's got two seconds, and then it'll fire. Two. There. And we'll take a look at this. And that's beautiful. Now, I need to light up that uh, interior right there. Okay, let's see how that looked. Really nice. Now I'm going to go to the other side and light so that I'm not in it like that. And we'll see how that did. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take all that and then meld them together. All right, so here are the three images that Gary has taken. And what we're going to do is uh, put these images all together into one document and then use the layer masking tool to kind of blend them together. As you can see here, this main area is lit nice, except this little foyer area here with the table is uh, needing a little extra help. So Gary has lit that up with his light sphere and we're going to blend it all together and make it look like one image. So let's go into this this second image and we're going to go Apple A to select all and Apple C to copy and go over to the first document and Apple V to paste. Then with the new layer selected go down to the bottom and select layer mask. When this layer mask is white that portion of the layer is visible and when it's black that portion is not visible. So by selecting on that and going Apple I, which inverts the white to black, we're hiding everything in that layer. With the brush tool and white selected as our color, we'll be able to paint in specific areas of this layer to blend everything together. Uh, let's go back up and get the second image in here. Again, Apple A to select all, Apple C to copy, and back to our main image, and Apple V to paste. Select the layer and layer mask, select it, Apple Eye to invert white to black. Now all we see is the base layer. So let's go ahead and select the first layer's layer mask. Make sure our brush and we're on white. And by right clicking you'll be able to change the size of your brush as well as the hardness. Um, the hardness will be the edges and we'll want to have 
zero percent giving it a nice soft edge and everything will feather off and we'll have a good size brush let's go a little bit larger uh, too much oops too much and we're gonna make sure that opacity is set to 50 percent and the reason we're doing that is we don't want to reveal 100% of this layer. We only we kind of want it to blend in with the background layer. Let's go ahead and start blending in this second layer. We're just going to click and drag our mouse just to kind of fade everything in nice. You can see that we're kind of losing the background layer and we kind of start seeing a little bit more of the second layer that we just pasted in. Just a little bit of room. Looking good. Oops. As you can see, I kind of got a little bit of uh, Gary's Light Sphere in this spot. So we're going to select our white, turn it to black. And now everywhere that we paint, we're going to start hiding this layer. So let's go brush it a little bit smaller. And we can just start selecting and painting over here just to hide a little bit of that there. And uh, we'll start doing in the second layer, we'll select this layer layer mask, put our brush back to white because we want to reveal portion of it, go a little bit bigger, and start painting a little bit more here, bring in some of these shadows, the sky, get a nice sunset, bring a little bit more there, you can see now it's kind of nice even light happening, and Go back to black because we got a little bit of Gary in there. There we go. And to hide the layer mask, so you can kind of just see what the full layer is, hold down the shift key and click on your layer mask, and you'll be able to see the full layer without the mask. Let's see if there's any spots that we kind of missed that we want to bring in and highlight a bit more. It's not we're good just turn it off kind of see this is this is the original image here is the second image blended into the first image of the layer masking tool and here is the I guess the third image now blended in and that's a brief overview of the layer masking tool